Clyde Shelton an engineer, is at home with his wife and daughter when there is a knock on the door, Clyde goes to open it when two armed men burst in, beating and tying him up. One attacker, Darby, tells Clyde you can't beat fate, before stabbing him. He then attacks and stabs his wife, before attempting to take advantage of her. Unfortunately, Clyde's daughter comes to check, and Darby decides to turn his attention to her, ignoring Clyde's pleas for him to stop. We then meet prosecuting attorney Nick Rice as he gives an update to District Attorney Jonas about Clyde Shelton's case. Due to mishandled evidence, the case is falling through, however not wanting to mess up his conviction rate, Nick is planning to make a deal with Darby. He goes to meet with Clyde who is very hopeful about the case. He learns that the second attacker, Ames, will go to death row on Darby's testimony, however Darby would only serve five years in prison on a lesser charge. Clyde knows that he saw them with his own eyes, however because he blacked out after, Nick tells him that the testimony will not hold in court, as it isn't what you know but what you can prove. The court hearing goes along as planned and Darby signs his deal and prepares to serve his time. After court, Nick speaks with the press about Darby's deal. Darby then comes over, shaking Nick's hand and thanking him for being in his corner. He then sees Clyde glaring at them from a distance. Ten years later, Nick is married to wife Kelly, with a daughter Denise. Kelly reminds him about Denise's cello recital, however due to work Nick can't make it. He instead suggests that they watch the recording later as a family instead. We then see Ames being prepared for his execution as the observers gather behind the glass. He is strapped to a table, he regrets being in the home but swears that he did not kill the family. Everyone begins preparing for a quick and easy procedure. However things go horribly wrong as Ames begins to convulse, screaming in pain, before dying with a horrific look on his face. After, Nick meets with Detective Dunnigan and the warden, to find out what went wrong with the execution. On one of the containers, Nick sees you can't fight fate scribbled on the back, and recalls hearing those words before. They suspect Darby, so Nick teams up with Dunnigan and Detective Garza to go after Darby who is in his apartment. Darby gets a call from a stranger, telling him to get out of the apartment as he hears the cops pulling up. He fires off shots at the cops before making a run for it along the rooftops. The stranger tells him to throw away his gun, and head to a nearby factory where he has tasered a police officer and his car is available for Darby to escape. He follows the instructions and gets to the car. He draws the cop's gun, ordering the confused man to drive him. They drive until they get to an abandoned area and Darby then prepares to execute the cop when he gets a call. He suddenly realizes that the cop is actually Clyde. Darby tries firing the gun, but pins come out injecting a neurotoxin into his body, paralyzing him. Nick reminds him about his family, before taking him away. Darby wakes up strapped to a table with drips going into his veins. Clyde injects him with adrenaline to keep him awake and pins his tongue to keep him from swallowing it. Clyde then lowers an overhead mirror with a picture of his family, to ensure that Darby sees everything that will happen to him. Clyde turns on his camera, then grabs a saw and begins to remove Darby's foot. Nick is going over the botched execution with his assistant Sarah, when he gets a call from Dunnigan as they have stumbled upon Darby's body, cut into 24 pieces. They suspect Clyde as the culprit and learn of his engineering background and the many properties he has purchased. We then see Clyde sitting alone at home when he hears the cops approaching his house. He begins to undress and when the cops pull up and burst in, he is butt naked. They get him pants and put him under arrest and as he leaves, he sees Nick there staring at him. Clyde is brought to a secure interrogation room at the prison, meanwhile, Nick's daughter collects a package at the door. Thinking it's her recital, she goes to play the DVD but sees gruesome scenes of Darby being mutilated. Nick goes to meet with Clyde, privately telling him that he thinks what he did was brave since he has a daughter. Nick then asks Clyde questions about the murder of Darby and Ames to which Clyde gives vague answers. Nick thinks he has a confession but Clyde reveals that all his answers could pass in court, as it's not what you know but what you can prove as Nick taught him. Clyde then tells him he will give him a confession, if he gets him a nice bed for his time in prison. Nick refuses his deal and heads out when he gets a call from his wife about the video they got at home. Nick is mad. He plans to make the deal so he can take Darby down. Darby has brought his comfortable mattress to his cell and his cellmate warns him to watch his back. Nick then learns from his assistant that all Clyde's properties are linked to a company in Panama meaning they cannot get the clearance to access them. Nick urges her to keep digging. At Clyde's trial, Nick is wrapping up his closing arguments, giving Clyde a chance to speak. He pleads his case to the judge and the court, explaining that Nick's team have no clear evidence, even quoting previous cases. The judge then begins to agree with him to let him out on bail, when Clyde suddenly switches. He berates the judge for considering letting him go free, after he was accused of killing two people. He remembers her from Darby's case and begins to cuss her out before he is dragged away. Nick goes back to meet with him, confused as to what Clyde's game plan is. Seeing that he got his bed, 
Clyde then confesses to killing Darby, even giving details to the murder. He also confesses to Ames killing, as he was able to swap out the poisonous containers easily. Nick thinks it is all over, but Clyde tells him that he has another confession to make, but this time, he needs a five-star meal delivered to his cell. He then hints that Darby's lawyer may be in danger. Nick heads out to his team to learn that Darby's lawyer was reported missing three days ago. Clyde reveals to them that he will let them save the lawyer, if they bring his meal at 1 p.m. sharp. The meal is brought in, but the warden begins to flex his power deliberately delaying the food from getting to Clyde. He finally gets his food but learns that it is past 1 p.m. He then gives them coordinates and they rush out on a chopper to get there. Meanwhile, Clyde is enjoying his meal when his cellmate threatens to beat him up if he doesn't share the food, so Clyde obliges and invites him to join the meal, striking up a conversation with him. Clyde then hides away the bone from the steak, and while he distracts the cellmate, he brutally stabs him to death. Clyde then lays on the bed waiting for the guards to get him. Meanwhile, Nick and Dunnigan get to the location and see the lawyer's briefcase. They frantically dig until they find the body, surrounded by empty oxygen tanks. Nick then realizes that if the warden hadn't delayed them, he might have been able to save the lawyer. He then gets an update from Sarah about Clyde killing his cellmate. Clyde is then brought to solitary confinement where Nick comes to speak with him. Nick thinks he went overboard but Clyde tells him he needs to learn to keep his word. Learning about Clyde's government contacts, Jonas brings Nick to speak with an ex-CIA spy who once worked with Clyde. He reveals that Clyde is a genius who was a consultant for the agency, creating imaginative assassination devices, and orchestrating intricate lethal tactics against nearly impossible targets. They are warned that Clyde can kill anyone anytime he wishes and that if he is in jail, it is all part of a bigger plan. Nick then reaches out to Sarah asking to set up a meeting with the judge and telling her to be careful. Nick and Jonas go to meet with the judge about keeping Clyde in jail. She gets a phone call when her phone explodes, killing her instantly. Nick swears Clyde has someone helping him and goes to speak with him. He thinks Clyde is just out for vengeance, but learns that if he wanted that, then Nick's family would be the first to go, as he knows everything about them. He instead is at war with the system that allowed his family's killer to walk free. Clyde then offers another deal, he is to be released, free of all charges by 6 am, or everyone will die. Hearing this, Nick has his entire team brought to the prison to set up offices until 6 the next morning. Later, Sarah reveals that she found a loophole to get Clyde's corporate expenses so they plan to find all his buildings. The next morning, the entire team eagerly watches the clock as it strikes 6. Breathing a sigh of relief, Nick sends off his team to take a break. They get in their cars to leave when suddenly the cars begin to blow up, killing his team including Sarah. Afterwards Nick is in shock when the detective reveals that there were car bombs in the gas tanks, with a radio signal nearby. Nick and Jonas go to meet with Mayor Henry who is mad at them for allowing Clyde to get away with this. She assigns security to both of them and urges them to get this under control. Nick goes home and sends his family off to a safe location under police escort. He heads back inside where he is shocked to see a framed news clipping of Clyde's case sitting on the table. Nick goes to meet with Clyde and suddenly starts punching him. Nick warns him to end this, but Clyde is just getting warmed up. Dunnigan pulls his gun to kill him but Nick stops him. Clyde then warns that he will bring the entire system down. The funeral is being held for the victims of the bombing. Jonas thinks that maybe they brought this down on themselves, but Nick thinks that he was the one who caused this. He confesses that the system changed him and he just wanted to win. Nick and Jonas then get into separate cars and move out. In the distance, a military drone takes aim, then fires an EMP shutting off all the cars. It suddenly opens fire on Jonas's car, ripping it to shreds with high-caliber bullets. Nick tries to get to Jonas but the drone fires a missile, blowing up the van to the horror of everyone. Nick goes back to meet with the mayor who initially threatens to fire Nick, but then decides to swear him in as the new district attorney. With the entire city in terror, the mayor plans to lock down the city and send out every available policeman to the streets to present a show of force. Nick then gets info from Sarah about Clyde's properties and begins going over the details, when he realizes that one of Nick's properties is right next to the prison. Nick and Dunnigan turn up at the location and decide to break in to search around. Inside, Nick sees Clyde's car, and following instinct, he lifts the car to see a hole dug out in the floor. They climb inside and end up in a well-dug-out tunnel leading directly under the prison. They follow the tunnel and end up in a room where they see a collection of guns, disguises and plans. In another room, they see a ladder leading directly to Clyde's cell. Dunnigan climbs up and opens the hatch, stepping into Clyde's cell but he is nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Clyde is disguised as a janitor heading into City Hall. He gets past security then heads to another room where he begins loading vials of green fluid. Nick and Dunnigan see that Clyde has hacked into cameras around the city and realize that Clyde is going after the mayor. 
They alert the team and rush back over to City Hall. Nick sees the abandoned janitor trolley on the cameras and rushes to the room directly below the mayor's meeting. Nick then spots a briefcase nearby and Garza goes over to check it out. He manages to open the case only to see a very complicated bomb set up inside, with powerful explosives wired to a cell phone. Dunnigan wants to alert everyone but Nick tells him that Clyde is watching, but he has a plan. Meanwhile, Clyde is able to get away from the building and make it back to his hideout, but cops posted outside spot him and report it in. He heads down underground where he taps into the mayor's meeting. He then climbs back into his cell where he is shocked to see Nick there waiting for him. Nick tries to convince him to stop what he is doing before he regrets it. Clyde picks up his cell phone and activates the bomb, only to see Nick quickly step out and lock the cell, and he hears his tunnel entrance close. Clyde then realizes that the bomb is under his bed. He then sits on his bed in defeat, looking at a bracelet of his daughter as the bomb explodes, engulfing him in flames and blowing the prison up. Nick then makes it back in time for his daughter's recital and smiles in relief to finally have his family back safe with him. Remember to turn on notifications, so you can watch more movie recaps like this. Thanks for watching.